like the, um, they call it um, in science, uh, if, if there is an observer, then mm, science mm-hmm. changes. So if they, like particle physics, they, they would do experiments and one thing would happen. And then if someone's observing, something different would happen. And, and they were trying to observe what's happening without observing it. And they just couldn't because you're always being observed. And they would try to use a camera, but the camera was the observer. Right. And they, they, they had a feeling something different was happening when no one was observing. So what they did um, and I, in one experiment was they had this machine shoot random, like, yes. almost like paintballs, or they were like little... Particles. Particles. Okay, particles. That's the same experiment. Onto a screen. Yes. But instead of having somebody watch... What the hell is that? <laughs> raccoon? Is it a raccoon? Uh, is it in the house? Or, 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 <laughs> it, would collect, oh, it would collect the particles. So instead of having a camera, they would have this to see, so there wouldn't really be an observer. It just kind of recorded what happened. Yes. yes. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now that we've been drinking the wine for a little while, I think I expected this rosé to be sweeter. And upon my first sip, when it wasn't very sweet, I was a little disappointed or underwhelmed. It wasn't what I expected, but I think now that we're, we've been drinking it a little while, um, I, I'm really enjoying it. It's the kind of wine that I would drink. It wasn't what I expected. Mm-hmm. And so I, my initial reaction was a step back, but um, I'm actually really enjoying it. Yeah, I am too. I, I'm enjoying it because I don't like, I don't like a guzzling wine, and and this is neither a guzzling wine nor a um, a slow sipping wine. Like this is something that I could, I could enjoy. I could enjoy this with a dinner or over a conversation. It's not, it's not a super slow sipping because sometimes they're just too harsh on you. This is, it's a wonderful wine. I like it. Yeah, yeah. This one's really grown on me. It's a shame. It's I would buy it again. It, it's a reasonable price. What did it cost? It was uh, like twenty three dollars. That sounds very reasonable. Yeah, I and think, it's a California wine. I think. Um, I think in some cases, California, yeah, with a French accent. French accent. <laughs> um, I think. I think in a lot of places, the California wines. I don't know. What do people say? I mean, I know the California wines are well respected all over the world, but I feel like when you live in the United States, it's domestic, and you're like, oh, it's better getting a French wine or a uh, a Chilean wine. Well, sure. I think. I think anybody thinks that anything imported is going to be better because. It's, you know, it's fancy. You can easily get a California wine. But no, I mean, California is respected anywhere, everywhere. Actually, we have some really great vineyards right here in New Jersey. We do. And we've been to a couple. Mother's Day, they have the um, the wine festival at Alba Vineyards. Alba, which we like to do. We, we like to do, do that. that. And then the other vineyards um, around New Jersey and the local areas all come to Alba Vineyards. And they have this big festival festival yeah. where you can have tastings. And they, they have an area for the kids yes. with bouncy houses. We brought our kids when they were small. Yeah, and we set up a, a blanket. And, um, yeah, kids' activities and wine and food. Mm-hmm. And music, live music. I remember. I remember. I bought um, a bottle of homemade balsamic vinegar there. Oh, that was amazing. Yes. And, um, they did the horse rides through the vineyards, the horse and carriage. Oh and, uh, yes, yes. I forgot they, about that. So, yeah. You can actually walk through the vineyard. But but I think people don't realize that you have great vineyards right here in New Jersey, of all places. In fact, I have a winemaking kit in my basement. We should go do that. We should buy, we need like the ingredients and stuff. Um, yeah. But it's like an in-home wine making kit. So maybe we'll, Rennie and I, maybe we'll do a video where we're making it and maybe kind of following the process because it needs to ferment, obviously. Obviously. Uh, to turn the sugar into I make alcohol. wine all the time, so I knew that. <laughs> and I want to try making beer too, so that might be fun. Yes, yes, that'd be fun actually. <laughs> I wonder what it takes to make whiskey. How do you make whiskey? Uh, you need a, like an oak barrel mm. and <laughs> rye and water. Because, you know, we were talking about the prohibition today. Who? Uh, me and my husband and our father. Um, we were talking about the prohibition and how people would make alcohol. Moonshine. Distill alcohol in their bathtubs. And how um, uh, during the prohibition, drinking was actually so popular that uh, families were ruined and falling apart. And the women, there was a name for them, and Antonio knew it, my husband, uh, the Harriets? 
I, I, I don't know, but a group of women would go to the bars, he said, I guess they're speakeasies because it was prohibition, with hatchets and start hatcheting and like smashing up the, the bar and the chairs. They didn't, as far as I know, they didn't hurt people, but they were trying to destroy the source of the alcohol because it was oh, destroying man, it was their families. Their families. Yeah, because oh, the husbands wow. were getting drunk and I've never violent. heard this. Well, I just learned about this today. But they weren't going to the bars during Prohibition because that was illegal. Yeah, but they were speakeasies. Oh, oh, speakeasies. So they were hidden bars. And for anybody who doesn't know, during the Prohibition, this is the 1920s, I think. Um, Mm, That was the Roaring Twenties. Was it the Twenties? We're going to have to fact check. We're going to fact check this. I think it was all around the 20s. During the Prohibition, alcohol became illegal. It wasn't illegal... From what I hear, it wasn't illegal to drink it or have it in your possession, but oh. it was illegal to uh, buy and sell. And, and make. make. <laughs> we are very historically accurate. That's beyond the point. The point is, we want to make vodka in our tub. Listen to reason. I'm listening to reason. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Shh. Today's secret word is rosé. When you hear today's secret word, take a sip, sip of rose. 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 <laughs> rose. Oh. That was so rose. <laughs> <laughs> like instead of blase, we'll make it rose. Uh, oh. <laughs> bottle go down, goes down. Bottle go down, goes down. Bottle go down, goes down easy. Goes down easy once you start throwing out the di- word of the day. <laughs> The word of the day rhymes with rosé. Ah. God, you're the best person on earth. <laughs> Everybody should have a twin. Not she- just a twin, but a twin like you. Oh! <laughs> okay, we're gonna get philosophical for a minute. I've been watching these like spiritual videos on, on how you um, can choose your family when you're in heaven and you come down from heaven and you know you choose who you live your life with and sometimes if you make mistakes in a past life you're doomed to make them again in this life with the same you people learn. until yeah. you learn so i've been watching these from what they say videos like this and it's been very interesting and it made me think about you yeah uh, of course. and you know what our relationship you know, was in heaven, you know, if there's a heaven and, and past lives. Have we always been together? And I, Were we I have, married? Have we yeah. been one person? And that's a question. Now we have set, separate souls and things like that, but we came into this earth as identical twins as one being split into two. And, and yeah, I question um, somewhere on another plane, in another universe, in another life, are we one person? Oh, okay, that's really interesting. Because, you know, in the mother's womb, the one egg split into yeah. two. Mm-hmm. So if there's such a thing as multi-universes, which is um, string theory, essentially, uh, yes. that's, that's, that's actual science. Yeah. Um, if there are other universes, yeah. d- if we do exist in those other universes, did that egg never split? There are choices. Pretty much, this happens or this happens, and in you know our particular universe, we split. In another universe, maybe we did not. Maybe I swallowed you whole, and you were living. Jesus, in- <laughs> you digested yeah. me. Found a twin, <laughs> teeth and hair. <laughs> My big fat Greek wedding. <laughs> That's what I thought it was. <laughs> that was a good Greek accent, by the way. But um, another another kind of science that they they say is that um, if if they have um, something of identical genetics, let's say they take, um, oh, let's just say they take biopsy from me. Let's just say they take a piece of my arm. I don't know, okay, this biopsy, and they cut it in two pieces, and they keep one in Los Angeles and put one in Hong Kong. Yes. That the two, you do something to one, the, in LA, the one in Hong Kong will react, react to it to because it. genetically they're the same and they're they're connected, they're connected. in that way. Yeah. And I kind of wonder if, you know, identical twins are connected that way too. And I know that they do experiments um, and studies on twins. They have. They did a lot. Of, I feel like they did a lot more of that in the 50s. Either that or those are no longer kept confidential and those are available. I'm sure they still do them now and they're just confidential. We the twins festivals, that. they do them right there. Like, but you got to wait in line for an hour or two and they do all kinds of testing right there. <sighs> Who else is going to the twins festival? Let like, us know in the comments. Like, like, like. So this is our first year going... 
knock on wood, we really want to go, but we definitely have to sign we're, up for one of those. We're not tests. planning an actual vacation this year, so we might be wide open. Oh, that's funny. To Us really either. go to the Twin Festival. It's in Ohio. It's in what? Twinsville, Ohio or yes. something? Is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah. Twinsburg. Twi- twi- okay. We've never been and we always wanted to go. <laughs> Last of it? To the millennials. These are, this is for the millennials. If this one's for the millennials. <laughs> Darn it. Darn it. That was the word of the day. You can sleep over. No, we're going to church in the morning. In that case, bring it on. And lately, I've been going to bed really early, too. Last night, I got into bed at 8.30. I was out by 9.15, and I oh, slept so, so good. good last night. So good. I know. Look at the girls. She's so beautiful. And she's the youngest of all of ours. Yeah, she's two, almost three. Uh, so guys, let us know what you think of the JNSQ. Let us know if you've tried it. Let us know if you want to try it down in the comments below. And like we said in our first video, we're going to be doing a Q&A uh, video of Rennie and I. <laughs> so if you have any questions about twins, about our lives, about, you know, our families, our kids, our work, what we, you know, anything, I don't know, anything, put your questions down in the comments section below. Leave us a like so that we know you were here. Please subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell so that you know when that video comes on. Cheers. Cheers to you. To you.